new type of war. Two world powers. Domination of sound. U.S. detects the most silent Chinese submarine in seconds. Nuclear weapons, thousands of military vehicles, millions of pounds of ammunition, billions of dollars worth of destruction, entire countries irreparably damaged. A U.S.-China war is one of the world's greatest nightmares. Yet, it is getting increasingly likely as the battle over Taiwan continues. China considers Taiwan a breakaway province that must be reabsorbed, while the U.S. considers the country a sovereign entity and a powerful ally whose sovereignty must remain. Both nations are willing to war over this disagreement. In many scenarios, the war could start from the ocean's depth, where both nations have entire bunkers of explosives hidden in submarines, waiting to launch. These submarines are currently traversing the ocean silently, but it appears the Chinese submarine silence might still be too noisy, and the U.S. could hear them loud and clear, all thanks to an ancient but revolutionary technology known as sonar. Sonar Sonar uses sound waves to see in the water. Today, it is the primary means of detecting submarines in anti-submarine warfare. A technique once used mainly for things like fishing evolved into a sophisticated military tool used by world powers to ensure dominance of the world's oceans. Nothing in the world today detects and identifies underwater objects as well as sonar does. Nothing even comes close. And sonar achieves this in two ways, actively or passively. 1. Active Sonar Active sonar goes out into the wild blue to find foreign objects in the distance. Achieving this involves active sonar transducers first emitting an acoustic signal or pulse of sound into the water. If an object is in the path of the sound pulse, the sound bounces off the object and returns an echo to the sonar transducer. If the transducer is equipped with the ability to receive signals, it measures the strength of the signal. By determining the time between the emission of the sound pulse and its reception, the transducer can determine the range and orientation of the object. 2. Passive Sonar Unlike active sonar, passive sonar's quest for the unknown does not require it to emit its own signal. There is a massive advantage to this, as we'll soon see. Instead, passive sonar only detects sound waves coming towards it. Passive sonar cannot measure object range or triangulation unless it is used in conjunction with other passive listening devices. So, active sonar is the more effective of the two when it comes to detecting and identifying threats. It can detect even objects perfectly still and quiet in the water. However, the effectiveness comes at an unforgivable cost. The sound waves it sends out are detectable. Therefore, as the active sonar searches for targets, targets can also spot the active sonar. Think of it as a flashlight illuminating a dark room. While the light can help the user search for other people in the room, anyone in the room can see the light and follow it back to its source. This is a big problem for a submarine, which relies on stealth to survive. Passive sonar, on the other hand, operates without sending out waves and consequently without revealing itself. It simply involves listening via sensitive hydrophones for telltale signs of nearby ships, such as propeller movement. Although this detection method isn't as shark-eyed as the active sonar, it is the sonar of choice for frequent use on submarines, whether Chinese or American. However, the way the navies of the two nations apply sonar to enemy detection varies wildly. For easy understanding, enemy detection in the ocean can be seen as an intercontinental game of hide-and-seek, full of many hints in the form of sound waves. Here is how the U.S. and China play the game. How the U.S. and China play Sound can come from any component of an enemy submarine or even the result of their movement. It really can be anything. Using the following sonar systems, the U.S. and China hunt for these sounds as they attempt to find one another in the deep blue. U.S. Sonar Sosa System 
In the 1950s, the Office of Naval Research contracted AT&T to build a network of underwater hydrophones to detect submarines. This project, named the Sound Surveillance System, abbreviated SOSUS, was a success, and the system was deployed off the east and west coasts of the United States, as well as Hawaii. The system protected major American naval bases from surprise submarine attacks. In time, the SOSUS system was deployed farther afield to allow U.S. intelligence to track Soviet subs over a wider area. By the 1980s, SOSUS regularly tracked Soviet subs as they came and went through a crucial gap linking Greenland, Iceland, and the United Kingdom, known as the GIUK Gap. In the event of war, the Soviet Union would surge submarines westward through the gap, where they would then be able to launch nuclear-tipped missiles at the continental United States or attack NATO ships with little time for the West to respond. Tracking the coming and going of such submarines, therefore, became an indicator of Soviet intentions. If NATO intelligence heard a large number of subs passing through, it could mean war was imminent. Today, with 50 submarines in their fleet, the rise of China as a main military threat to the U.S. has necessitated a GIUK-like checkpoint to check Chinese submarine activity or multiple checkpoints. Should these checkpoints be crossed, conflict may not be too far away. Chinese sonar, spy buoys. Operation Limpid is an ongoing Canadian operation involving Canadian air, ground, and sea forces aimed at detecting threats to Canada's security as early as possible. During this operation, in 2022, Canada's Defence Forces discovered spy buoys in the Arctic, which experts believe were planted there by China as part of a broad effort to monitor American nuclear submarines. Between this discovery and the spy balloon spotted flying over the U.S., it appears China is actively monitoring U.S. and Canadian forces more than originally believed. Canada's Department of National Defense and the Canadian Armed Forces stated that they were already fully aware of efforts by China to conduct surveillance operations in Canadian airspace and maritime using dual-purpose technologies, which are simply technologies with military purposes that may use civilian purposes as a cover. A hydrophone-equipped buoy could use oceanographic research as a cover, but actually be recording the sounds of passing subs. China could be trying to pin down the patrol routes of U.S. Navy submarines in the Arctic and, in doing so, discern patterns or even likely patrol routes for American nuclear missile-armed submarines. In 1983, a troop of Boy Scouts found a Soviet-made buoy in the Strait of Juan de Fuca in Washington State. Laid by the Russian ship Avril Sarchiev, the buoy was designed to record the sounds of Ohio-class missile submarines as they transited the strait from their base at Kitsap. It likely did so under the cover of conducting underwater research. The U.S. Navy flew the buoy out by helicopter and, after studying it, confirmed it was used for espionage. Just a few days later, another similar buoy was pulled up. It's just a never-ending drama with these two world powers. Chinese Sonar – Bubble Hunters China recently came up with a new technology to detect submarines, and, shocking as it may sound, this technique is based around bubbles – bubbles that the submarine's propeller screws generate during cavitation. Cavitation takes place when pressure behind a moving ship propeller drops low enough to boil water, creating vapor bubbles. When the bubbles eventually pop, they create electromagnetic emissions that Chinese sonars aim to pick up. However, this is easier said than done, and their implications may not be as significant as the Chinese researchers hope they may be. Here's why. Firstly, every Navy and submarine crew for nearly a century has been aware of the effects of cavitation. It's been a means of detecting submarines and torpedoes since before World War II. Extensive work is already carried out to minimize cavitation, and submarine commanders are aware of exactly how fast they push their boats before they begin to create the dreaded bubbles. Secondly, navies are moving away from cavitation-producing propellers. The Royal Navy's Astute-class submarines, the U.S. Navy's Sea Wolf and Virginia-class subs, and the upcoming Columbia-class ballistic missile submarines all use pump jet propulsors. Pump jets enclose their propellers in a shroud that blocks cavitation noise, preventing the very technique the Chinese research proposes. Only older American submarines are still equipped with conventional propellers, and Virginia-class submarines are gradually replacing them. 
Once that's done, the entire American fleet would be fitted with propulsors, and the Chinese research findings may no longer be relevant, except against less technological advanced navies. The research into sonar continues. Navies continue to seek how they can apply the technology to spot enemy forces without getting spotted themselves. Achieving this could be the difference between winning a war and being wiped out of history. Recent updates show that the only way to achieve this is by, well, subscribe to this channel and like this video to find out. Thanks for watching.